Hello there. In business, as we know, any advantage that can make you money, get you ahead, is worth chasing. It's worth having. We often see that greed is good and the greediest wins, although that's a very 80s way of thinking. We are talking about time displacement here. And one particular industrialist, the father in many ways of the computer revolution of the late 20th century, one Henry Starling. Starling was a human who didn't amount to very much until in the 1960s he by chance happened upon a small federation time ship originating from the 29th century that crashed on earth. Now rather than being you know a good person and helping the pilot he didn't help the pilot but he did help himself to the time ship. He took it away and with his crude Neanderthal level of understanding beat out a few technological patents based on how he perceived the technology to work, probably things off the computer core and other such things over the next few years. Time after time after time developing new technologies based on his very loose, very crude interpretation of 29th century technology. He was able to adapt and radiate out various scientific patterns that made him an extremely wealthy and successful businessman. By the year 1996, the original pilot of the ship 30 years later was now living as a vagrant and a homeless man for some reason, and Starling was living the life of, you know, a 20th century um, Elon Musk, allegedly, stealing technology from others to make himself wealthier. Remember that word, allegedly. And, of course, this is a very obvious allegory for technology and business run amok, where greed and desire for more power overrides any other interests for, quite frankly, any other use in society. Starling was a man noted for meeting Ronald Reagan and other important figures. He ingratiated himself with the rich and powerful, all thanks to, again, his modest understanding of future technology. What do we know about Henry Starling himself? He was basically a hippie in the 60s who, as I said, happened upon this But We can infer certain things about him based on the fact that he was at all, on any level, able to comprehend, first of all, the concept that time travel was real. He was able to easily comprehend the existence of this time ship. He was also able, at least on some level, to either use other people, although I don't think that's the case, to exploit the technology he saw. Now he did surround himself with a small number of men and women who were aware of, what the, of the time ship's existence and would study it, but maybe didn't have all the pieces with a smaller, even smaller group, such as his little henchmen, who did know a little bit more about it. He exploited it for various different techniques and technologies, such as weapons development, computer sciences, all such things. but. Mostly it was just to make himself rich and powerful and influential, not to better humanity or in any other way do anything more altruistic. He was purely out to help himself, but we can tell, as I said, he must have been an intelligent individual. If not necessarily well educated, he certainly had a natural intelligence that allowed him to not only foresee the possibilities but also exploit. Now imagine I found that time ship and I decided, you know what? I can be rich off this mother. How well is that going for me? I can barely use my PC. If it, my PC breaks, I can't fix it. I barely know how the damn thing works as it is. If you were to throw me back in time 500 years and me to go, you know, in the future we'll have this thing called electricity. And they'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, how does that work? I have no idea. <laughs> it's, it's, it's seriously, it'd suck. So, quite fr and some, to be honest, some of the technology back then, I'm probably going to look at it and go, so uh, how does that work? <laughs> I've no idea. Seriously, I'm not an engineer, not a clue. So, Starling, at least on some level, had the ability to take the technology, take the ideas from the science and make it his own. Yes, it was crude. Yes, it was primitive, advanced for the time, nowhere near the full exploitation of the technology, but certainly he was smart enough to do it. Then, in 1996, the USS Voyager pops out of the time tunnel. He detects it because he controls a lot of satellites. He thinks Voyager has come back to retrieve the time ship, and he's like, no, that ain't happening. I'm planning to use the time ship to go into the future, which is what he was planning. He wanted to go 
further into the future once again and steal more technology. Bear in mind, the time ship already had everything he could ever need, so this was actually an indication more of greed rather than rational intelligence. He'd simply reached an impasse. He couldn't exploit the technology any further. He simply didn't have the creative understanding to do so, or was simply unwilling to dismantle his golden goose and not be able to put it back together again. Allegedly is what I'm assuming he was thinking. So he's like, right, 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 we'll go into the future. But then he realizes Voyager's actually in the 24th century and he thinks they're there to steal it. They try and tell him, no, we're just trying to correct the timeline, you dickhead. So he's like, nah, you have to steal the technology. I don't trust you. So Starlink starts to show his true colors at this point. They, of course, try to retrieve the ship but are unable to do so because he does have the ability to control the vessel, disperse their transporter, put the shields up, various other things to stop them being able to simply take it. He is able to backpedal off their communication signal or access their computer system based on his understanding of 29th century technology, allowing him to access 24th century technology as he does this. He even manages to download the Doctor, and he is actually responsible for the creation of the mobile emitter, which is based on 29th century technology. I don't actually think the mobile emitter was something that was kept on board the time ship. I think it was something Stalin did make, but it was based on the technology. He certainly had the ability to create the hollow emitters that would project the Doctor into the room, but this science would be lost. Stalin kept a lot of this technology close to his own, close to himself, and I doubt anyone got access to it after he was killed and his building was dismantled. If anyone got their hands on it, it fell into the hands of shadowy government agencies like the CIA or somebody else, allegedly, and they sent it off to Area 51 where they keep the aliens, allegedly, and, you know, unless you believe the guy recently came forward saying he saw them. And why would you believe that? Really? Come on, the guy's lying. Anyway. Um, so... That's probably where it ended up, and maybe Section 31 had it, which maybe is why they were so advanced, allegedly. Maybe. Probably not. But maybe. And that would be Henry Stalin's bad plan in a nutshell. Steal the technology, go use it to steal more technology, so he can advance himself in the past. It's basically the same idea as the Temple Cold War, just from the wrong side by someone not smart enough to really do it properly. He never fully was able to be able to exploit the technology of the time ship. He had an understanding of how to use it, but that's the same as me saying again, I know how to use my PC, but I can't fix it if it breaks. I can do diagnostics and use other things to try, but I can't really do it. And Stalin, you know, imagine, him try, imagine trying to use something in the 29th century. It would be the equivalent of me literally handing a laptop to someone from the Bronze Age and saying, right, yeah, um, do all my work for me fix that. Just make another one. You know, copy this, you'll be fine. No, they're not going to be able to do it. They don't have the material knowledge. How would they create the silicon? How would they create the electricity? You see where I'm going with this. He'd never really be able to fully exploit it, but he tried. And the point is, he was intelligent enough to, at least on some level, be able to comprehend and overcome those problems and take the technology to its next level from his point of view. But it was never going to be fully exploitable. I am going to go into a side on this one, and that is something of an honourable mention to another character who I'm going to mention in connection with him, which is Rain Robinson, partially for this reason, played by the delightful, somewhat, Sarah Silverman, who, I don't know, I would kind of like her. And interesting aside, not a majorly interesting, but it's interesting from my point of view, that uh, was actually the first time I ever heard the name Rain. Always liked the name Rain, and you know, a number of years ago. I had a kid, which in case any of you are interested or have ever noticed the um, tattoo on my arm, although it is spelt differently to the character, I actually got the name Rain from Star Trek and then many years later named my child Rain. Ah, not necessarily after that character, but because of it. As I said, interesting aside from my point of view. But the character of Rain Robinson is interesting. She's a human scientist in the 20th century, much younger than Starling, and in my opinion, at least just as intelligent, if not more. She worked for SETI, which is the, obviously, search for extraterrestrial life, basically. And she thinks she's found it when she detects the USS Voyager in orbit. She sends out the standard greeting, but is detected. Starling sends people out to kill her and take all of her data because she can't share future technology. And... She ends up joining the Voyager crew to actually battle against it. So, go Team Voyager. Although they make the better decision than Kirk made, and let's face it, this was not a good decision Kirk made when he decided to take someone from the 20th century to the 23rd century 
talk about a temple violation of the temple prime a violation of the temple prime directive voyager despite janeway's reputation for kind of flagrant disregard of the temple prime directive she actually was like no 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 rain robinson you can't come to the future first of all voyager's stuck in the delta quadrants that's not the best place for you to go secondly you belong here what about your descendants if you don't have descendants what about the influences you'll have in this time period you're a scientist it's not like you're just a homeless person scribbling insane writings on the wall and talking about aliens and time ships in the future it's not like that so you you're actually someone that's going to make a difference in this time period and you need to stay here but she's an interesting character maybe in the future will deserve a proper breakdown of her character and stuff but i thought i'd mention her here because she's kind of relevant to the story without her the voyager crew on the surface of earth at the time would not have been able to navigate the way around the world sufficiently to actually go against Starling and really go up against his voice because they, they didn't really know the 20th century. Tom Paris, who was a historian and a, a lover of 20th century Earth, he it's, it's kind of like saying, I personally really like history. But when you look at the Roman Empire, which I've studied, of course, when you talk about it, things, the span of time is so incomprehensibly, incomprehensibly far back and it, it becomes like you start to mark things by centuries, not decades. And it's the same point of view as Sector Leaf and Tom Paris. He knows that people in the 20th century used the word groovy as a slang term, but knowing that they used that in the 1960s or 70s and not in the 1990s, it's a subtlety of knowledge that I probably wouldn't have if I went back to the Roman Empire and was to try and use local Roman terminology but I could be using it in the wrong century, never mind just the wrong decade. Same sort of thing. Without her, she was absolutely essential for helping navigate them. Basically, she made the whole trip kind of groovy and good for her and definitely good for the future. And it helped restore the timeline and reset humanity back to where it should be. But the entire events of the 20th century was something of a predestination paradox, because without the time ship going back, the computer revolution of the late 20th century never would have happened. Starling, in many ways, although was no visionary, he was not a man of destiny, he was not a man who had a manifest destiny that he was going to have these effects on the future in and of itself, without him, without his selfishness, without his greed, that never would have happened. And we'd all be living in a darker time, and that could have affected the very development of warp drive. As without the advances in computer science, maybe... Cochrane might never have built the Phoenix. It may never have had a computer powerful enough to run it, at least not then, which would have meant first contact didn't happen, humanity wouldn't have become allies of the Vulcans. The Earth Romulan War may never have happened, the the you know races that would eventually coalesce to become the Federation may never have come together. The Vulcans and Andorians might have torn each other apart before humans had a chance to get involved and stop it. You think about it, the cha the the butterfly effect of Starlin's greed ultimately doesn't make him an anti-hero in no way but did mean that a new future and destiny for the entire quadrant would be created without him and his greed that technology would never have existed and without that technology humanity never would have been exactly what it became and that effect on other species considering humans in a way are a nexus as we know from other races such as the sphere builders who knew that without humanity the federation never would have existed so they tried to use the zindi to destroy humans without them the entire federation would never have existed so without stalin taking humanity forwards so we would have been in a position to create the federation when we did then the galaxy would be a very different place maybe a lot colder and a lot more empty or maybe under romulan rule or maybe destroyed by the sphere builders who knows so in a say in a way he's the savior of the alpha quadrant go team starling anyway that was henry starling of course he was killed when he used the time ship to try to go to the 29th century and steal more technology he was destroyed because he didn't properly calibrate the ship's temporal drive so when he tried to open up a tear in the space-time continuum and go through it, it would have caused an explosion that would have ultimately destroyed the entire solar system. This resulted in Voyager having to destroy the time ship, which then ironically 
resulted in the time ship and the original timeline being restored and Captain Braxton and that same time ship coming back to take Voyager back to where it should be. Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey, to quote um, the Doctor. So, what do we think about Henry Starling? What we think is he was a garbage human being who never did any real good for anyone other than himself and he actually hurt more people in his own lifetime than he probably really helped but long term there was some good that came from his actions, from his greed. And that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share, subscribe, comment down below and I think we're done here.